We have seen the worst economic recession of our lifetime. Yet while the vast majority of Americans are feeling the strain of a bad economy, we know that is not true for all Americans. The U.S. income inequality, it has its highest level since the Census Bureau began tracking household income. The Wall Street Journal reported that the top 1% saw their income increase by 275% over the last 30 years. And according to the Congressional Research Service, the U.S. income distribution appears to be amongst the most unequal of all major industrial nations. Every taxpayer in our country bailed out the banks. We were told that once the banks got bailed out, our economy would turn around. Yet while Wall Street was indeed bailed out, we know our main streets were not. The number of foreclosures petitions, the first step in the process for a, lending, for a lender taking a property, rose by 35% in 2012. Americans need loans to buy a home, to sustain and open a small business, to buy a car, to go or to send their kids to college. For better or worse, we are a credit-based economy, and we're seeing the harmful results today of banks not investing in our communities, and I believe it's time and that something does have to give. As an at-large member of the City Council, I have the honor of representing the entire city. I see the effects of our economic realities in the neighborhoods that we all represent every day. We know small businesses are having a hard time staying open, never mind expanding. And we know many that are closing. We know that men and women in the trades are suffering massive unemployment. Some up to 50% are unemployed today. We know that many Bostonians are looking for work, struggling to pay their bills. You know, my parents instilled in me the value of hard work, and I was tired if you worked hard and played by the rules, you could provide for yourself and your family. That is actually the American dream. However, the dream is getting more elusive, and now more than ever, we must organize for economic justice. It's with that in mind that I filed the Invest in Boston bill, which at its core simply says, as a city, we will only invest in banks that invest in the communities we represent. We have a $2.6 billion budget. A billion of that is sitting in banks right now. Here's what we know, three basic questions that I'm not proposing to change that we find the answer to. Is our money safe? What's the interest rate? And can we pull money in the event of an emergency? Think an act of God, think an emergency you never want to see in our city. We, we want to know the answer to those things. But you know what we don't know? We don't know if they're lending to small businesses in our, in our city, despite the fact that we know that small businesses employ 70% of all Americans. We don't know if they're a part of the foreclosure prices, crisis or solution. We don't know if they're lending to development projects that put the men and women in the trades back to work. We don't know if they're refinancing loans so that the many constituents we have who are currently paying 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 percent interest on a home when the market rate is asking for 5, 4 percent can see some justice. We don't know if they're lending to qualifying home buyers. We don't even know if they employ Boston residents. I believe we should know the answer to these questions. So that's why I filed Invest in Boston and ask all those questions. But on top of that, I would give preferred status to the banks who are doing the most for our communities and for the people we represent. We'll decide this in the light of day because this ordinance also creates a commission that will hold public hearings and present their findings to the public. Our commitments to a transparent process that put communities first. I believe that when banks invest in Boston again, we'll see more jobs, a stronger housing market, less foreclosures, vibrant small businesses. At its core,